Just want to preface this video with some information. I shot this in early 2017. I shot it live on Periscope, so between the three of us, there's actually a live audience asking Jill and John questions. They're the guests on this video. They're both from New Zealand, and I happened to find them in a supermarket, or they happened to find me in a supermarket, periscoping. They thought it was interesting. We got talking about food, because I was just explaining it to my Periscope viewers, and they are actually from, uh, like I say, New Zealand. But Jill is a horticultural scientist, so they were looking at delivery, packaging, country of origin, all this kind of stuff. But I said, hey, do you want to come on the Periscope and chat about food and the perception of food from New Zealand in Hong Kong and then the greater market that is China? So together we sit down for about 50 minutes. I've edited it just for brevity and I hope you enjoy it. But importantly, I just wanted to let you know that it's not shot in 4K because it's an older video. It's an older conversation, but all new conversations that I'm uploading on the channel are in glorious 4K. Yes, we are here because I am a horticultural scientist. Maybe I'll shift this over here. And for those of you who don't know what that is, you might know horticulture, which is all about um, fruit and vegetables and plants and how to grow them. But I do the actual science behind that. And my particular field is looking at uh, fruit and fruit trees, how to um, mm. understanding how to grow them better so that you get better quality fruit and how to harvest and store those and so what I do is we work out the best way to do that and then we pass that on to the growers so they know how to do it and one of the things that we're doing is we're developing new uh, cultivars of apricots and these are really really special because they are harvested about this time of year where nobody else can harvest this fruit and they have very high sugar so they're very sweet and have a lot of flavour and we think they'll be excellent for the Asian market so we want to come and have a look at what else is in the market at this time what the quality of that's like and um, just get and where it's from and how it's displayed what the packaging looks like uh, and what the prices are. So you're, you're focusing on so many details that obviously the average consumer is just like taking for granted. And yeah, but, but then all, that leads you into all the, those <laughs> are important. And when the buyer is deciding what they're going to buy, which of these fruit they're going to choose mm -hmm. um, is it's the, the what the fruit looks like, what the display looks like, all those things, and then what the quality of that fruit is like when they taste it is what they will then come back and buy that again. So we think we've got some products that are really good that we want to understand about what's already in the market. Okay, and so you were surprised by the fact there's so much variety here. And we were talking before we started about the variety. Do you just want to like relate that back to what it's like in New Zealand? This, oh. how it's, because we've got it good here, by the sounds oh, of it, from your perspective. Incredibly good. Absolutely yeah. amazing the number of countries that, that the fruit is from. You know, from the USA, from Kenya, from UK, from uh, Mexico, Mexico uh, Italy, all around the world. And the absolute best quality products are in there. Beautiful colours and um, quality. You can see it's high quality. Um, right. fruit and vegetables that are here. But that's because there's so many so many rich Chinese here in these malls yes. that they yeah. want this exotic. And they're mm. prepared to pay for that quality because mm. um, you know they know they're going to get good good quality so it was really exciting for us I mean we just don't get that range in New Zealand certainly not in the little town we live in. Right where do you live again? Uh, it's a small town called well, Alexandra is a slightly bigger town, and we're from Clyde, which is even smaller. Okay, uh, the specific New Zealander I'm thinking of. Oh, right there, I'm from New Zealand, he sounds Australian. Ah, uh, no, born and bred in New Zealand. <laughs> Did you know there's a New Zealand fish and chip shop here? Oh. No. Yeah, I, I tweeted you. Yeah. Um, you should definitely check it out. His name is Matthew, and he prides himself on bringing in New Zealand quality yes. fish and stuff. You'd have a right good old oh, conversation yeah. with him about food. I'll give you the address again. Sounds after. good. Thank you. Yeah. The, so you were surprised by the quality, and you actually came to me with a packet uh, about oh, someone who's over the fence. Yeah, over the fence, growing these beautiful stone fruit, just as our neighbour. 
So it was quite impressive. How did, that, was, how did that feel? Oh, I was very proud because he put a lot of effort into growing this top quality fruit for it to end up in Hong Kong. In a very, it wasn't just a hidden away in a little corner piece of the refrigerator or the refrigerated cabinet. It was a very big display of fruit from New Zealand. So right. it made me very proud. But did you know he was selling it here before no, he came here? No. Right, okay. And, it's, no. and as you said, it's. It, in the, if I remember correctly, you said it's over the fence. So it's basically, your neighbour. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, we get right. on well with them, very well with yeah, them. Our, yes. one of our sons went to school with is very good friends with his son. So yeah. Oh, okay. We know yeah. them very well. Yes. Okay, and uh, so what else have you noticed about the variety of uh, food here? Like you said, you had a theory that you were saying that uh, Hong, well, Kong is Hong Kong <laughs> is so central in the world. Um, huge container port here in Hong Kong. So much, much easier to get the produce here. Um, whereas in New Zealand, we're a long way from anywhere. We're three hours away from Australia, and that's our closest neighbour. Oh, it doesn't look that far, but okay. Yeah, but yeah. it is at three Surprised. hours in a plane. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a long way. Um, so to get our produce from New Zealand to the Northern Hemisphere takes a great deal of effort, and the, the quality has to be right up there before it even leaves. Right. So, yeah. yes. Here, where, what do you mean, uh, sweet? What do you mean, sweet? I think what's happening is that people are noticing your accents. Okay. Some, people, ah. some people are making, there's no rude comments, but yeah. people are making uh, compliments or trying to like just point out that you're saying better in a different way. And somebody no, said yeah. your accent is luscious, John. Okay. Oh, when you were talking before you. at the beginning, luscious someone's... accent. <laughs> yeah, we we do have a strong Kiwi accent. So. Yeah. Okay. The meaning of sweet fruit, the fruit in the past, um, is picked very green and the flavours aren't very good. What's this? Whereas Jules Company, Plant oh. and Food in New Zealand, pride themselves in producing quality fruit that not only looks great but tastes out of this world yeah so. the flavor is incredible what we have is we have fruit that it, it uh, increases the sugar inside the fruit much faster rate than other apricots okay and so by the time you pick it it's um it's a lot okay. has a much better flavor uh perry perry much skull face that's his name saying they should go to a wet market so besides 360 yeah because we talked about this again where, where else what other supermarkets have you been in and have you been to a wet market like the on the ground sort of local yes. market oh, yes. 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 One. Yeah. and once again the quality was incredible just the local people were buying beautiful fruit but not the exotic stuff right. it wasn't or apples um, pears and melons yeah there wasn't the range but it was beautiful, fresh, just, you know, out in the street, they had the street market. Right. Um, it was fabulous. If you, uh, maybe, maybe you haven't found the right one, or maybe you have found it, we haven't mentioned it. There is a, there are some local markets with international produce as well. Okay. And oh, right. It's like, I'm, even I'm blown away. Mm. Like, I've been here for five years, and I come around, I'm like, really? It's organic, or it's from this part of the world, and they've got, they're shipping it direct to a little street market. Yes, it's, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and that's what I was saying before that Hong Kong is so central in the world, east, west, north, south, that the produce can come here economically. And mm. obviously, yeah. you know, there are people that are prepared to pay for that fruit. Yeah, pay for that quality. There was a scandal recently. Well, kind of scandal, but the, the papers picked it up here. Where you could buy a single strawberry for 16 US dollars. Did you hear about this? No. no. no and so what happened was that there was this beautiful strawberry, which it was admittedly, yes. but just one. Mm. It was from Japan, and Japan is seen yes. as a very exotic, yeah. up market, um, high, uh, not high retail, high. High end. High end. What's, I'm trying to think of like profit. What's the word I'm thinking of? High margin. Yes, mm. high margin. And yes. they've they've wrapped this strawberry in like five layers of packaging. It comes mm. in a box. Mm. Comes with like the hay, the fake mm. hay, yeah. and then extra padding in like a like you've seen it in 360. They've got like the, the apples wrapped in that polystyrene yeah, yeah. sort of the nest. Mesh. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. mesh. And it's got five layers of this, and people point to like, This is utterly ridiculous. Like you're paying. 20 US dollars, not 16, 20 US dollars for one strawberry. Yes. How do they get away with it? But that's the market here. Um, well, <laughs> there's also the Asian thing of gift 
giving gifts. Yeah. You know, and they don't mind what they pay to give a gift to someone that they love or care for. So. Are you getting in uh, New Zealand mangosteens and durians? No, we you don't, don't get, get those. Durians, uh, no. Have you tried them? So Perry McScopeface, you've got a complicated ma name, dude. <laughs> Perry McScopeface is asking if you've tried durian and mangosteens. I have. Right. Okay. Yeah. Durian, the yeah. smell is. Well, the mm. smell is pretty. Yeah, but yeah. the taste is pretty good. But maybe you can get that in Auckland, okay, in New you, Zealand, okay. because we have quite a big Asian population there, right. and so I suspect if anywhere in New Zealand they pro possibly get some of those things in some of the specialty stores okay. there. But we live way down in the south, um, and there just wouldn't be the demand. And have you seen anything here that you can't get in New Zealand? Oh, yeah. The yes. Yeah. Do you remember the name? A number of things, actually. What were those silly little mangoes that were that about this big? But, yeah, they the were. Oh, the little yellow ones. We, yeah. In, in yeah. 360. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Nothing else? Those sort of things, no. Um, Nothing exotic? You think, whoa, what the crikey, what the hell, what the hell was oh, that? Oh, there were some things I didn't know what they were. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough. Yes. Uh, there's a question coming in. I hate strawberry except the ones that go in Quebec. Okay, so this, <laughs> this chap is talking about Canadian strawberries. Just talking oh, about. Oh, well, we were in Quebec last year and we did saw strawberries growing. You're, you're sourcing them? So, no, we went and looked, oh, okay. looked at them. Yeah. In, the, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that you're actually going to China Yes. And you said that you're having trouble trying to get your apricots like on the market in Australia, but you have something else on the market. In, sorry, in China, you have something else on in China. Yeah, What's yeah, we can we can um, <clears throat> export cherries to China, right? But not apricots. Now they, that's because the cherries have been assessed for quality. No, no, it's <laughs> not to do with quality. It's to do with things like um, quarantine issues, like pests and diseases okay. that we might have that they don't have in China. And so they want to make sure that if our fruit comes into China, that we're not going to bring in any pests and diseases that could threaten their industry. Okay, and the reason why you haven't had the apricots is because they haven't assessed the quality. No, of... they, haven't, they haven't assessed sorry, whether the... there's any danger. Right, the danger, sorry, sorry I keep yeah. thinking of quality. Mm. Uh, and so that interested me and I thought, oh, let's, let's bring them onto Periscope because there is always these questions that I get where people talk about, oh, do they eat cats and dogs in Hong Kong? Do they, you know, do you ever get food poisoning in Hong Kong? Uh, I think it's an issue. Someone's asking about overpacking. We just talked about that, about the overpackaging. I think it's ridiculous. I'm very much a minimalist. The, so we're talking about all these myths and uh, there's misconceptions about f food quality in China. I'm sure there is some bad apples, to use a bad pun, but I just wanted to sort of bring it back to a level of nuance and just talk about your apricots where they haven't been assessed for the pests and diseases. Pests yeah. and diseases. Yes. So yes. what's the issue? What's the issue if there is a danger with apricots? Like, how does it transfer? How would that be an issue? Well, uh, imagine that we had uh, some particular pest, like a mealybug or something. What's a mealybug? It's a tiny little insect. Right, is it local to New Zealand? Um, well, there's all different species of okay. mealybug, um, or a mite, or tiny, okay. any tiny little it's, insects. Okay. That, that are, and, and imagine that there's some live ones that happen to get on one or two fruit and they go to China and then they jump off the fruit and then they get onto their fruit and they start to, to okay. be a pest over there. They're concerned about that. Most, right. most countries in the world are concerned about that. Yeah. And so they do an assessment as to what the danger is, uh, how, what the risk is and how likely it is that that could happen and what we are doing to make sure that that isn't going to happen. Probably a little bit of political playing going on in here because New Zealand and Australia have very strict quarantine laws. Right. Um, very, very high that we don't, because we're both islands and we've been separated away from everywhere before, um, we don't have many pests and diseases. Mm. So we probably do not let some of Chinese products into New Zealand without giving them a, a very hard going over. So they might be playing tit for tat. Okay, someone's thing. asking, don't you already have apricots in China? They probably do. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Actually, yes. China is the origin of apricot. Okay. And so China is the origin of kiwi fruit. So Someone did mention that in the chat. Yes. I, yeah. But, but yeah. I didn't bring yeah. it up. So, so I, 
China actually grows a lot of apricots. Okay. So that, that, but that's that's the same anywhere. Um, if you're bringing something in and they're growing that, they want to make sure they're not going to get any new diseases. For example, there's, there's a, a disease in um, many other countries that we don't in New Zealand want uh, okay. for apricots. And so New Zealand want to send the apricots to, to China because it's out of season. We're Southern Hemisphere. Oh, of course. Yeah, so you get them all year round then. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no apricots in China at the moment. Okay. So because it's <laughs> cunts coming up springtime. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It all makes sense now. Yes. Mm. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. so Perry McScope face. I'm gonna call you Scope Face. Sorry. It's it's just too much. I get tongue tied. <laughs> the he was talking about Chinese gooberries. That's the name. Yes. The original oh, name of yeah. kiwi fruit. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, the other question then is how long does that kind of take? Like this kind of assessment? Um, well, apparently we're in a queue of a number of uh, products that are waiting to be assessed. So apricots is in a queue, in a list, um, and I don't know how far down the list they are. So they go through one by one and we'll do the full assessment on that and then make a decision and then move to the next okay. one. So it could be, it could be two years or it could be four years. I don't know how long it's going to be before we can do that. But we can take them into Hong Kong, but not to mainland China. How does it feel to sit on something for like two or four years? Like well, you've got a product, you want to sell it, and, then, and any country, not just picking on China, but any country can say, we need to assess this. It's going to take roughly well, years. Yeah, it's very frustrating, of course. So in the meantime, um, we have to do the work to work out you know, what they want, um, what form they might want it in, but in the, uh, otherwise we look at other markets that we can send it to. And is that normal? It's not just a Chinese thing. Is it normal oh, to, yeah, to wait absolutely. to... Taking yeah. decades to get our New Zealand apples into Australia, and they still will not accept them. We had to go through to the World Trade Organisation okay. to yeah. get it in the, the well, Australia. Australia is very protective of their growers. But right. they will not import bananas from anywhere in the world. They are only allowed to eat their own bananas produced in Australia. Wow. To this very day, yes. Okay. So That's they do awesome. not want New Zealand apples in Australia. Isn't that a bit of pride though? Like, oh, look at these you. Kiwis, oh, we don't yeah. want them in here. Yeah. And our apples are incredibly nicer than anything. Australia ever produces. <laughs> There's right, probably okay. Australians listening. Or ever will produce. Uh, well, oh. Luke, Luke is my resident Australian viewer, but he's not here, uh, oddly enough. He's not me in my charts. Well, they did have a, they did have a trade um, barrier that they were talking about, which was, um, oh, what is it now? Uh, fire blight, which is a, a disease that, that apples can get, and they were concerned that our New Zealand apples would bring fire blight into Australia. What's so? What's fire blight? Fire blight. It's a disease. Okay. And so they said they didn't have it, and we had it. But we were able to prove through scientific tests that just taking the apples in, the risk was absolutely tiny of them being able to get it from our. You've got apples. such fascinating names for fire blight. That sounds really dangerous. But then, what was the first? What was the insect? The the millibug? Millibug. Yeah. Okay, yeah. millibugs and fire blights. It sounds yeah. like something from uh, Harry Potter or something. Yeah. Or from Mars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, does does anybody else find this interesting that it takes this long to set something up? I, I mean, as a consumer, I don't have to think about it. I just see it on the shelf. And if it's yeah. not your product or a particular product, I know I can um, find an alternative. I mean, my well, some of my hassle actually is getting things from America to here. Like some of the organic shops, just mm. green, you know, the bespoke organic, yeah. tailored to the Westerners. Sometimes I can get things there that you can't get in a supermarket. But then I think, oh, they've run out of stock, so how do I get it? And for me, it's like an Amazon. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a it, 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 contact Amazon, and yeah. they'll bring it over instead. And that's that's all I have to worry mm. about, you know. Yeah. yeah. And it's like two weeks, and I think, oh, I've got to wait two weeks for this. And you guys are waiting two to four years. Yeah. Yeah. What have they done to process the? Oh, there. Oh, New Zealand is more famous for lamb and milk powder. What have they done <laughs> to the processes of the growing of the products? Right. Done to the so what have you done to the growing process of your products? What makes it better? Ben, I think Ben is asking. What? Does, oh, well, we've, we've um, 
done crossing to develop new cultivars. What's a crossing? So that's where we, you know it's how like we breeding, have, like cross breeding. Yeah. Okay. But you, it's it's not genetic engineering. It's like being a, a giant bee, if you like. So you know, if you've got uh, people probably know apples, different cultivars of apples better, like Fuji and Royal Gala right. and, and and Golden Delicious. Sure. So um, you have two cultivars or two selections that you one that is really juicy and the other one's got good flavour. Cross pollination? So, is it to do with cross pollination? Yeah. Okay. So you take the pollen from one and you dab it on the um, the other flower and then that forms a, a new fruit. Okay. Isn't it I know I know you, you said it's not genetic engineering but that's because there's is that because there's a stigma attached and you want to be clear? Because to me um, I listen to a couple of uh, people who talk about farming, and they they want to point out that we've been gen we've been engineering products for thousands of years. That's how we have like various varieties and stuff. So, but isn't it still kind of genetic engineering, but not in the, the laboratory? Well, I mean, you can say that's stick. genetic engineering if a bee comes and does that. So, oh. you know, if you had a bee, because that's how it happens naturally, is you have a bee that flies along onto one flower and then it flies mm. to another flower and that does it. So you're like a giant bee. Is it any different? I don't think so. Right, okay. That's very different from mm. from something that's genetically engineered mm. in the, the, the sense. Well, saying that, can I pick your brains on Manuka honey? Is that something we can talk about? Because New Zealanders and Australians, I think, I think, I, can't remember, I think it's New Zealand, but they have a reputation for producing really good manuka honey, yeah. which is the idea that the honey is made from one type of plant source, one flowering source, and that's it. So, what's so? Is there any like credibility to that? I haven't read up on it, so I just hear about. Oh, it's supposed to be better for you as a as a scientist. Yeah. How much do you know about that? And. What do you, um, what's your opinion on it? Well, I actually, as well as being a scientist, I'm a, a, a group leader for a, um, a number of staff in our research institute, and one of the, one team in there is, works on pollination and, and bees and that mm. sort of thing, and they've been actually working on um, testing whether honey is 100% um, manuka honey. Okay. And um, so they, you know, they can, they can test for that, and uh, you know, or or what percentage of the honey is is actually pure. Okay. So I can't tell you what the answer. Oh, okay. Uh, Damn. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. There has been quite a lot of cases of of people doctoring it, not necessarily New Zealanders, but um, but yeah. anyone can put a label on manuka honey. And get away with it, right? Okay. And There's no certification, official certification, no, or something. No, not. Well, I think in New Zealand they're working towards doing that, mm, yeah. but you know, around the world, you know, mm. who knows what else other people do. I remember when I used to work in a supermarket back in the UK, the manuka honey would come in like security boxes, okay. because they're just so yep. expensive. Yes. Yeah. And the normal yeah. honey is obviously, you know, the security mm. boxes were reserved for like things like DVDs and mm. video games and whatnot. Yeah. Huh? And that's okay. why there has been a lot of uh, a lot of copycats because it is quite valuable product. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's uh, ladder man is saying it's in the US through the EPA. Oh, we've got a Kiwi in the chat. Hello, George. George, I think it's George. George C1. Which part of uh, New Zealand? These these lovely people are from. Alexandra. Central Otago. Central Otago. Okay. What's the Asian community like in Hong Kong? Uh, not in Hong Kong. In in uh, New Zealand. Oh, there's a big Asian community, particularly in Auckland, right. which is our biggest city. Um, not so many down in the south. Yeah. Um, mostly very wealthy Chinese. Wealthy Chinese again. Very wealthy mm. Chinese. Yeah. But New Zealand welcomes them with open arms. If they've got money, they don't have to speak English or anything like that. But if they've oh, got right. money, they're allowed in. Right, okay. Yeah. So, because it's good for our economy. Simple so, as that. Yes. Yeah. So in turn, it's put a huge um, uh, problem to housing. Well, he just says there, look, looky cookie saying, who buy our lands and houses. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. They've bought and everything up. So in New Zealand now, it's incredibly expensive, particularly in Auckland, to 
for, for a young couple to be able to afford to buy a house because there's so much pressure for, on houses, they can't build enough houses. Similar to uh, Vancouver. Vancouver, Sydney, yeah. Melbourne. It's just mm. massive, massive problem. Right. There's not enough houses and so young people <laughs> find it very hard. Does New Zealand have a problem with aphids attacking crops? And I have another question, but I've just forgot it. So while you're answering that question, I'll try and remember. Hmm. Does a Hong Kong aphids. does a, yeah? Aphids. Um, I mean we do have aphids, uh -huh. but we don't have like uh, swarms of them. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a big it's problem. Not a big no. problem. Okay, that's very specific, ladder man. Why would you ask such a specific question? I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm just very. Ultimately, I'm curious. <coughs> So the Chinese, the sort of Chinese are coming. One of the things that I, I try to explain to people is like, I mean, I've never been to China. Tomorrow, we, as we were talking, yeah. I'm going to get my visa application tomorrow for to be able to go to China. Oh, okay. But one of the things I do read a lot about is obviously the scale of China. The things that if China puts their heart, like I read a headline today. I haven't read the article yet, but it says they've just built a solar farm the size of Macau in China. Mm. Oh. And I don't think people understand. I'm horticulture on Long Island. All oh, right. I'm in horticulture in Long Island, so oh, that's New okay. Jersey yeah. uh, area. And so I'd like to keep reminding people like the scale of China, the size of the place. Mm. You know, people think America is a big country, and it is. No. China is just a little bit bigger, but it's huge. It's like and your economy five times is the size of population. Strong. Yeah. Um, they're the biggest <laughs> manufacturer of solar in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, they are. We've yeah. got more green energy jobs as well. I keep yeah. repeating myself, mm. but. But then you see them say, you've got this huge middle class, and because of the sheer number of people, it's, it's just like, they all will go somewhere and have a huge impact. The market will just strain under that pressure that mm. they create. So yep. if they go to New Zealand or even Vancouver, there's just so many yeah. of them. You don't realize until they're there, that, oh my God, how, how rich is... Yeah. But how the other thing that we've noticed is that we have a massive number of Chinese coming as tourists to New Zealand. Right. particularly Chinese New Year and so there are thousands of them come over to New Zealand for four or five days and rush around massive number of buses of them mm -hmm. um, and a lot driving uh, it's 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 huge and what are they there for because Hong Kong empties actually of Chinese people yeah and you're saying New Zealand fills up with Chinese people. yes yep. okay and your friend in New Zealand is agreeing with you there are too many yeah. yeah, they block up our roads with their atrocious driving. <laughs> oh, oh, it's terrible. <clears throat> okay, we get yep. some we get similar problems in the uh, new territories. So some of the smaller sort of like village roads, and they get annoyed with all the people coming in, mm. and they oh, experience the same but problems. But you know, we we have to acknowledge that all the tourists coming in are bringing their money in, and you know yeah, that's yeah, great yeah. for and the economy. New Zealand needs the tourists because but we don't have much else. We're not a manufacturing. Mm. All we do is grow stuff and have a fairly large tourist mm. industry. Just just to be clear, I don't think like them coming is an issue. It's just that there's there's just so many people who have the ability to travel somewhere. Yes, exactly. And, and they've got the the disposable income to spend. Yeah. But the, the trouble with New Zealand is that we don't have. The, the roads, the roads, yeah. the infrastructure. Uh, yeah, that that can cope with that many. Right. Our roads are, are small. We don't have big motorways at all. And it's like a one, it's US. a once a year thing as well, isn't yeah. it? So you're not yeah. going to adapt to it. I know in China they they build so much to accommodate and allow literally mm. million, hundreds of millions of people to travel during that Chinese yeah. New Year yeah. period to get, say, from the say Shanghai, Beijing, to get to their specific farm village and then get back again yes mm. so, you know you've got the road you see the roads of like 10 lanes yeah. 60 yeah. lanes or something like that we just have to try not to travel during that time okay right? <laughs> so you so it does actually affect you personally it does then oh, we, we are yeah. because we're in a high tourist area yeah right um mm. yeah uh are there any regulation in new zealand on pesticides and fertilizers in the water or aquifers are there any, so what restrictions do you have with regards to regulations to growing food? Oh, yeah, we have a lot of regulations um, about application of pesticides uh, and, and um, into the water as well. Right. So for our, for our fruit, the, the regional councils are very concerned about how much is being go going on the fruit. And the other thing is that because we have a, such a high export of our fruit and vegetables, 
um, there are regulations where we're sending them. So we've always been very, very careful about um, about what goes on to the fruit, right? Because we have to have very low levels to go overseas. So we have. Um, one of the earlier countries to develop integrated fruit production where we're monitoring the fruit to decide when to when to apply any pesticides rather than just applying it because we think it needs it. Okay. We're, we're measuring the, the pests and, and only applying it if we have to. I was reading somewhere that the population of bees are higher in proportion to the ones that are dying out, so like the, the, the die-off rate is lower in in Australia and New Zealand than they are in, say, America, and they actually have to import bees to America to keep boosting up the numbers because they keep dying. Mm. Is that part of that? Do you think? The bees? Yeah, I'm just jumping around yeah. now, sorry. Because yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. we think have rains. got the varroa um, mite has come in, mm -hmm. so you probably don't know about that, but that's that is a, a new pest that's arrived in New Zealand and that affects the bees and initially we did have a reduction in, in the bees, the bee population but um, with our, grower, our beehive uh, beekeepers have managed to work out how to, how to deal with that and uh, some of the people in my team have actually been working with them to mm. help solve those sorts of problems. Okay. But the problem that we do have is that because of the manuka honey, the beekeepers all want to um, have their bees for manuka honey and not for pollinating the, the orchards. And, the oh, okay. and so now the orchardists have to pay a lot more money if they want beehives. Right. Because the bee beekeepers want to put their honey into the manuka honey. Did you did you hear about the uh, the bees dying off in China, and they actually started paying humans to pollinate the apple trees? Did you hear about this story? No. No. So what they did is the bees died off, and they were like, "Well, we need to pollinate this crop of uh, of apple trees." Mm. And so they paid Chinese workers, and obviously they they're very low paid. Mm. And they went round with with like paintbrushes paint and dabbed. Yeah. Yes. They dabbed yep. all the flowers in the apple trees. Yep. Okay. Now because humans can be systematic in their approach to something like because they're getting paid and bees are kind of like scattershot, they're going everywhere. Mm. They actually increase the yield of their, of their apples and then, then they realize they have too many apples and then the, um, the workers said, we want more money. Okay. And then they priced themselves out and then they had yes. to get the bees back in. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But the fact that they can have, they have the manpower to pay Chinese yes. people to like dab yeah. Yes. All the pollen oh, wow. aspects of the yeah. of the apple but tree. But you see, in <clears throat> in places like Japan, they only have half a hectare, a quarter of a hectare yeah. of land, and so it's a, often a family business. And they will go around and turn every apple on every tree and put a bag on every apple on every tree, just so that each apple is perfect. How do you turn an apple? Because you're twisting the. Uh... Yeah, apparently they do. They they can twist them slightly or something, I don't know. So oh, they're okay. aiming for the top end of the yeah. market. For the Hong Kong market. Yeah, for the <laughs> yeah. Yes. probably. For 360. Yeah. People are blown away. No, no, yep. they, they, before they went through the renovation of that mm. particular superstore, mm. I could walk in at the front and there'd be apples there that were like, say four for like 40 US dollars or something. Mm. It'd be a, yeah. yeah. People just... And then, you know, I've been in China where they, they go along putting the little <laughs> stickers on every apple. Right, okay. So that they have, um, and then the the sunlight shines on the rest of it, and then take the sticker off, and it's that's all pale, and you've got a, a pattern written in Chinese on, the, on apple. the actual apple skin. Oh, okay. Did you not skin. see that at the 360 today? No, no, no. Yeah, no, there's little <coughs> emblems yeah. on them. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I've seen that in China, and and so again, there are farmers who have very small <laughs> plots, but they get high value for each apple because they. They um, look after every apple. Right. Okay. Mm. Uh, people want people. I read this somewhere. It lives in a pineapple under the sea. Uh, it's a random comment. You get that on Periscope. The I read somewhere that the stickers. I know this is this is really geeky now, but I read somewhere that the stickers on say apples are actually edible. Probably are. Now. Oh, some yes. of them will yeah. be. Okay. Some of them yeah. will be. Yeah. It will depend yeah. on the sticker. Yeah. How do you know though? How do you know which ones are edible I, or not? I definitely wouldn't eat a sticker. No, 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 no. definitely not. <laughs> okay, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, I'm gonna take this question from Ladderman, and then we're gonna talk about your next destination. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, he's asking, is the Asian long beetle out of control in New Zealand? 
Asian long beetle. Yeah. Don't know that we've got it. Is it called like fire monster or something? Uh, probably. No, I don't, I don't think <laughs> I haven't heard of it. Right. Um, so yeah. I don't think we have it. Yes. Okay, I think you need to find the actual dramatic New Zealand name, and then, and then Jill will know what you're talking about. Okay. Long beetle just sounds, you know, very mathematical. <laughs> but don't, don't ever try to <clears throat> bring any fruit or product into New Zealand uh, via your hand luggage or person, because you will be immediately stopped and fined heavily. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Because we're and... worried about bringing in diseases yeah. and we have little beagle dogs that come along and sniff your luggage and they're trained to sniff fruit. What yes. about fruit jellies? What about these food stuffs? Any food you will be stopped at the border. You have to declare every food, yes. all food. Okay, can, yeah. and can you eat it on there before you pass? Or do you have to bin it or what? You have to bin it before or you will be fined. No yeah. questions okay. asked. Yeah, if you yeah. haven't declared it on your card, you can declare it and then they decide whether it's safe. Like some food you can bring in as long as you've declared it. Right, a Mars bar. Yeah, Mars bar. Okay, fine. ironically, which isn't food yeah. anyway. But right. you would have to declare it on your immigration form um, as food, because um, it's got chocolate in it, right. nuts and things. And No, well, it says all food. I all think. food. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. in case. Right. Have you seen an episode of The Simpsons where Bart Simpson brings, oh, in brings oh, the, uh, yeah. the bullfrog? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, right, we're wrapping up. Where are you going after Hong Kong? Ah, we're going on to Xi'an in China. Okay, and what's there? Um, well, I am on the board of directors of the International Society of Horticultural Science. So that represents horticultural scientists all around the world. So we have over 6,000 members and uh, so um, we, we have a council which is representatives from all the countries around the world and they vote uh, every four years to have people represent them on the board of directors. Okay. And so we have six elected members and I'm one of them. And in Xi'an, which, which part of China is it? Xi'an? It's Xi'an. Oh, Xi'an, okay. X-I-A-N. It's in Shanxi an yeah. province, where the terracotta warriors are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is that in the north? It's sort of in the middle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so you're there to elect somebody? No, to we're there. As at, I'm on a board, the board of directors, and so um, we meet twice a year in different places around the world. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and discuss the business of the society, and we always take the chance to meet local people and uh, horticultural people, researchers in that area oh, okay. to discuss with them and meet them. Yeah. Okay. Because the world has to incorporate China in the big scope of things. Sure. Up till now it's been sort of left out on its own, but it's a power to be reckoned with. So. Well, we, we um, like to try, try and um, listen to all countries and, and um, be inclusive okay. of all countries. So the meeting people. after Xi'an will be in Madagascar. Okay. So hmm. there's a little island in between Madagas Madagascar and the African continent, and uh, it's French-owned. I met a lady there once. Fantastic accent. Yeah? yeah, yeah. It's tiny, and she was living in Swansea, which is where I was studying at university. Mm. But the fact that there was a French-speaking island wow. and it didn't only exist in between Madagascar. Like yeah. Just, a, just. A, so Just I'm very story. lucky yeah. to uh, accompany my wife around the I'll world. I'll tell him after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you're getting uh, free travel? Free no, travel. No, what do you get no, out of, what do you no. get, what do you get out of uh, following the wife? No, we have to pay for him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's. But uh, it is good fun. We okay. go to very nice places around the world. Okay. Um, and but meet incredible people. Are you naturally interested in what Jill does? I am very passionate about horticulture. Okay. He, he has growing. actually grown. He and his brother had their own um, little uh, horticultural enterprise. Okay. Yes. Many years, a few years ago now. Right. But I am also very proud of what New Zealand can produce from a little island in the middle of an ocean, or two islands actually, yeah. and export around the world. Right. Yeah. What we try and focus on is is high quality because we can't compete in the 
in the um, the mass market. the mass market. Right. Mm. We don't we we have too high uh, labour costs, so we have to produce high quality, and that's where my research company comes in by developing new cultivars that are of very good quality. What's a cultivar? That's like um, you know you've got. Royal, royal garlic, apple, oh, okay, Fuji. like a brand. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we we mm. like jazz apple, mm. um, and in the apple, those are two new ones that you, you, are produced by New Zealand by our company. In this market, you cannot stay still. You've always got to be growing something better because all the other growers will catch up to you. Sure. So mm. you've always got to be performing above expectations to bring out another variety that's better than the last. But I have to say, our new varieties that we have, we have um, people in the USA growing them as well. So... Right. Yeah, go on, sorry. So we have um, people in other places around the world, including the USA, um, who will grow our varieties, but they do that together with our our partners who who are marketers. But they are uh, so they're your product, but it's grown in another country yeah. yes. to your level of quality. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, are they branded? Just uh, I want to wrap it up, but I keep asking yeah. questions. I, I hope you don't mind. So, are they American or are they New Zealand on the product labeling? Oh, it uh, it will say that it's it's from the US. Right. But it will have our Brand name on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's no quality. There's no. Real di there's no real difference yeah. otherwise. New Zealand's biggest <laughs> uh, mucker <laughs> in marketing history was not licensing the name Kiwi. Okay. We never licensed the name Kiwi fruit, and that was a marketing disaster for New Zealand, because anyone in the world can use the brand. Kiwi fruit. Well, it's not a brand, but it's, it's a, the it's name. No. But that was, we did that so many years ago when yeah. we weren't doing branding. So, so okay, sorry, someone's asking if you're Northerners or Southerners, sorry. <clears throat> Northerners or Southern, North Island or South Island? Well, we're in the Southern Hemisphere and we're in the South Island. But, so. but uh, we were both born in the North Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Ladderman's asking, have the seasons in New Zealand come early, starting with spring? Ours this year? <coughs> this yeah. year we were actually late. We had a very cool spring and mm. summer. Summer was really cool. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so things were a little bit late this year actually. Mm. How is it actually coming coming from New Zealand? You, you just arrived. How is how is the difference in temperature? I'm just be, I, uh, I, similar temperature to here. It is. Uh, yeah. Well, we were a bit warmer. Yeah. We were a bit warmer than this. A little, little bit warmer. But okay. This is very, we were this is very around 25 to 30 degrees C. Okay. And what are you going to do in your few days here? Anything Anything else besides inspecting supermarkets and speaking no, to periscopers? No, basically, basically um, checking out the mm -hmm. food scene, as in the fresh produce. Mm -hmm. But it's a very vibrant city, uh, lots to do, um, and it's exciting. Um, just want to explore the yeah, city. We'll just wander around a bit. Yeah. Okay, you definitely got to check out Hooked. Yeah, yeah, we'll go, yeah. Go okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because sure. I mean, I get I, because my audience is like worldwide. When they visit, we say like you got to do this place. You got to do and because we periscope it, they they know Matthew really by extension through us. Okay. And oh, then they get yeah. to go there and say, I've been watching you on Periscope for like a year and a half. I've come to try your fish and chips as well. Right so on. Matthew benefits obviously okay. because he lets oh, us in his shop. We'll yeah. definitely go and see Matthew okay. probably tonight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Could you I, use your gold card? Sorry, someone's asking me about a gold card. What? No, we haven't got a gold card. I'm not oh, that okay. old. That's pretty rude. <laughs> What's yeah, well, you what? said you were retired. Oh, yeah. No, gold card is for over 65-year-olds. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just walked into that blindly. Yeah. Oh, well, I, thought it was a bit, I thought it was like a business yeah. card or something. No, like no, gold card. card is, you can get free train and buses and whatnot. And okay. It only applies to certain cities. Certainly where we are, it won't apply. Oh, I okay. I apologise. I didn't yeah. know what a gold card was. No, well, not many people would. <laughs> uh, it's got to be a New Zealand to ask that question. Yes. <laughs> I guess they could sting me with some questions and I'm just going to yeah. ask just blatantly. Oh, what's yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. Um, Twitter, if somebody wants to stay in contact with you, because Ladderman seems really engaged. Yeah. So how can he find you on Twitter? You are Apricot... Apric Apricot Queen. There we go. Apricot Queen. No real... Not eat real fish. Real, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Matthew, if you come here, George, I'm assuming that's your name. You haven't said no otherwise. 
um, you should come here and try it because he's uh, he tries to basically bring New Zealand to Hong Kong through fish and chips. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's very Kiwi <laughs> fish and chips. <laughs> Okay, well, Jill and John, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for no, you're meeting We've me and stopping it. me. Okay, yeah. good. And are you I, on Twitter? No. Okay, no. what were you going to say? Sorry. You were very interesting to listen to in the supermarket. It's a very I, different I, style, I, though. Oh, no, it was great. It was <laughs> very amusing. <laughs> yeah. And I loved your accent. Oh, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank, we, you. We, well, we'll, thank you for having us on this show. Yeah. Thank okay, you. great. Right. It's a bit different, though, because sometimes when I'm scoping by myself, I take on a different sort of character because I'm making jokes, doing satire. But when I sit down with guests, I try and keep it kind of like humorous, but not to the same degree. Yeah. And look, I smartened up and put a shirt on, you know? Yeah. Have you saw nice. it before? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Totally different. All right. Okay. Thank you uh, very much. Yeah. Thank you for okay. watching. Again, Bye. thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. See you. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye.